Well, hello, everybody. And is everybody doing all right today? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh, double thumbs up. And why? Because here in the UK, we are now officially in summer. This is one of those lovely days towards the end of June where the sun is shining, the clouds are flittering across the sky, my garden is growing, and everything is beautiful in the world today. Mm. In fact, it's also one of those perfect days for flying. Don't you think so? <laughs> So where are we going to go to today? Well, good question. I had a message from a YouTuber by the name of Gizmo White who wrote, Father Dane, can you do Naples, L-I-R-N, to Malta, L-M-M-L? -M -M well, of course I can. We are Ryanair. We can do anything. We can go anywhere we want. <laughs> With or without air traffic control permission. <laughs> so that's what we'll do today. We'll go from Italy to Malta. Does it sound like a good plan? <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, I did check. And I found out that EasyJet makes that run between the two points each day. And it is EasyJet Flight 4841. 4841. Or you can use the U2 4841 and then that will bring up the information on FlightAware. Now... The flight aware didn't give me a starting stand or a, an arrival stand. So I went into Flight Radar 24. And Flight Radar 24 gives me the information that I need. It shows actually where they turned on their TCAS and where they turned it off. So I've got a good fix on their start and arrival. And they started out at stand 15 at Naples and they arrived at apron 9, stand 4. Now in P3D that is listed as the southeast parking and that would be number 4. So we're going to follow that as best we can. I've got some great airport scenery for today. Naples the L-I-R-N airport scenery is made by Aerosoft. Very, very nice. Very, very detailed. And Malta L-M-M-L -L airport scenery is made by Just Sim. Again, some magnificent scenery. So this is a great day to go flying. What do you think, Gizmo? Are you ready to give this a go and join me in pre-flight? Okay, then let's go and make ourselves a flight plan, shall we? Well, here we are. I'm looking here at the EasyJet Flight 4841 up here. There it is. There's the designator right there. U2 4841. And this is on... Flight Aware. Now this particular one arrived over a month ago and took off from Naples and arrived at Malta. 
Now this of course is an all flight and when I looked at the past flights there weren't any there wasn't much of a history of that so I had to just simply you know do a bit of guessing but it did show the route as it took it on this particular flight and their particular altitude on this was 37,000 feet. I'm going to have a look up here now at Flight Radar 24 because this gives me a little bit more information. For one thing, down here it gives me an awful lot of history of these flights and I just picked the, the latest one that was available. They flew at 37,000 feet and they were an Airbus A320. So that's what they were using. But what I wanted to see here was their starting point. And if you see, this is the airport at Naples. And this right here is stand 15 right there. And so we're going to park right at the same place and then we will go and take our flight. And as you can see, it took off in that direction yesterday, swung around and then went south. Now I'm going to zoom in on Malta. And here you can see the runway it came in at. Now this is the this is the apron nine or the southeast parking area. And here you can see <coughs> this came in on stand number four. Right there, stand number four. So I'm going to try to copy that as much as I can. In fact, I'll even do the 37,000 feet and put that in as well. Good, that gives us the information that we needed. So let's look at windy. Wind is 060 at 12 knots, varying between 020 and 090. So uh, quite a little bit of variation there at Naples. You can see the wind direction is coming down and it's picking up some wind here. So it is switching back and forth. It is VFR. 10 kilometers or more, scattered cloud at 3,000 feet, some more at 8,000 feet, temperature always a warm 24 degrees. Well, Italy still is warmer than we are here in England because today we are only 20 degrees. Now, Q&H 1008, no significant change it says. So looking at this, wind 060, then that suggests that we will be following the same one because this is 06 uh, departure. So we'll just simply go out of here to the end and take off. So it will be a very straightforward takeoff from Naples today. Looking at our destination, here you can see the wind is quite brisk. It's blowing right across the island at a good clip there. It says the wind is 310 degrees, 22 knots. That is a stiff wind. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. VFR conditions. Clouds few at 1800 feet. Temperature 25 degrees. Q&H 1010. Just a little bit below the... Uh, barometric standard. So if we were to look at this, I would have to say that we would be landing on the same runway that the previous flight did. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair, we are 186, and we're starting out from LIRN. And we're going to go to LMML. 
And there it is. It's given us an alternate right over here. We'll look that up in a moment. Airframe is, of course, Ryanair 186. We're Cruise Profile 6. There's our registration. Now, in the optional entries, it says schedule flight time. This, of course, is block time, gate to gate. Departure runway 6, arrival runway 31. I'm going to put in here the altitude of 370. Passengers are full, of course, because we have that one ton of champagne and carry-on. And it's saying that we'll be using the, the Delhi 7 Golf departure. Della, there's the route. And coming in to Malta. Now, looking down here, here's the route. It's got us coming over, going over to Palermo, going down here, and then swinging into Malta. If things go pear shaped, then Comiso at the bottom end of Sicily is going to be our alternate airport. All right, let's save this and let's see if there are any issues. All right, here we are. We've got the flight plan come back. There we are, LIRN originating LMML destination. There's the alternate. We have our cruise altitude of flight level 370. There's the routing, no remarks. So there's no issues with the altitude for the cruise then. So going down here, let's look at the information. We are Ryanair 186 and there's our cruise altitude. And right here, there's the flight route. LICB is the alternate should things go pear shaped. We are going to need to know that we are cruising cost index six, I should say. And there's the average wind uh, for the flight today. 334 degrees at 49 knots. Mm, stiff wind. The block fuel is 5,946. Almost six metric tons. Reserves 2267. That is just about 2.3 to round that out. Trip and taxi is 3,017 kilograms, just over three metric tons. No tankering recommended. And here, this is the route. And I will be putting this in the description box below the video. Here's the information for the wind for our descent. At 20,000 feet, it's 326 at 31, and it's minus 16 degrees at that point. At flight level 150, or 15,000 feet, again, it's still to 326, but the wind speed is now 25 knots, and it's minus 5 outside. And at 10,000 feet, it is 3. 16 and 28 knots, but a plus four. Looking at our cruise altitude, this is flight level 390, will be 2,000 feet below, but it gives us a general idea. So as you can see here, we've got basically tailwinds going all the way in. Oh, I do like tailwinds. Much, much more economical for a flight. And then here's the vertical profile. Here we do. We have the climb all the way to top of climb. We don't spend an awful lot of time up there before we are descending and coming into Malta. But this little wavy line, this dotted line up here, that's got a lot of movement. This is the chopper pause and it is certainly a changeable condition there. All right, 
We know now what we're getting into. Let's go into Navigraph charts. Well, here we are. We click on flights, new flights from SimBrief and use the latest one that we've got. Click on the start, open the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport information and we're going to need to know the parking stands and coordinates. And here you can see we will be right here at apron number one, stand 15. Looking at our, oh, and our departure. This is going to be our departure path to go out. So this is the information that we'll need. And I'll also pin that down here as well. Now, zooming over to the destination, I'm going to go here. I'm going to pin the airport and I'm going to pin the coordinate and stands. And here you can see this is apron nine. This is the same one that we were looking at the previous flight and they came in to stand number four right here. So we'll be doing the same thing. It's calling for runway three one for the approach. So we're going to go here and put that in. And there it is. There's the there's the information. So looking at the stars, there are no stars. So we're actually going to be putting something in like this. I'm going to show you this. If this is our last waypoint, I'm going to plan on going down here to Tibor, which will be the initial approach fix. Then we'll make to Sudox, which is the intermediate fix. And then on 312 degrees, we'll be coming in right onto a final to land there. And I'm going to click here, go to approaches. I'm going to go to ILS runway 31. There's Tibor, click that and you can see how it's brought the pattern in. So this is what we're going to need to do when we are in the cockpit. Okay, everything is there. Right, let's go into the cockpit and get things prepared, shall we? Ah, uh, there you are, Gizmo White. Do come on in and take your seat. Remember, buckle up. Now, let me tell you where we are. I'm here at LIRN, which of course is Naples Airport, and I'm at stand 15, stand 15. And it is a cloudy day, which is what was forecast and there's a lot of detail a lot of detail on this airport scenery this of course is made by aerosoft and i have to show you some of the some of the things that are rather unique about this for instance up here you can see birds flying around is <laughs> They've got lots and lots of birds up there. So we'll have to watch out for bird strikes. And as you can see, there are also birds flying around. And every once in a while, you'll also see the shadows down here that the birds cast. So some really extraordinary detail there. And of course, we do have the kamikazes. There they go. Where would we be without a kamikaze on an airport? Hmm. But here's the detail of the concourse and the terminal building that's directly in front of us. And you can see all of the shops that they've got up there. That's really quite good, isn't it? And 
looking over, oh, here we go. We've got a bus that's in hot pursuit of that other kamikaze. Go get them. <laughs> but there is a lot of detail in this, a lot of detail. They've really gone to town on this airport scenery. Beautiful scenery. And here comes a lorry. Let's see what, uh, where he goes. Oh, there's vehicles everywhere. Really, <laughs> quite extraordinary. Anyway, we'll just have to make sure that we dodge all of those uh, vehicles as they come rumbling around. Frame rate is 29, uh, 30, 29, between 29 and 30. So not bad. And remember, I am using three monitors run by one computer and it has uh, the settings are all for 4K. That's UHD. So it's full 4K resolution. And uh, I've got all the stops pulled out as well. So getting 29 or 30 frames per second is really very good. I've been around and I've kicked the tires and I also made sure that there were no dents in any of the fuselage. I also cleaned the windows, even though it might rain. We don't know, but look how sparklingly clean they are. Look, look, it's almost like there's no windows at all. They're that clean. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, this is really nice. Okay. Here we go then. I'm going to click on the battery we have 25 volts up there which is enough to turn on the fuel pumps and start the APU. I'll show you in detail here what that uh, what is happening. The low oil pressure light came on and then you're going to see the engine gas temperature is going to climb up It'll climb up to about eight and then it'll stabilize. The low oil pressure light went off, which is good. And then it should start to drop back to about four. Now, when it comes back to four, I'm looking then for this light to pop on, which tells me that the APU generator is working. And let's see looking for it now there it is so now i turn that on and then up here it says we have 115 volts see now with that we can do all sorts of things inside the cockpit right now that we have the 115 volts up here i'm going to turn on the irs which are the, which is the GPS system that we have here. Now I'm going to turn on the galley. I always hope that somebody back there is going to make me a cup of tea. I don't know what they do back there, but anyway, that's what I'm hoping. Turn on the emergency exit lights. And of course, no smoking and seatbelt signs are now on. Over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. Now that's to keep all of these windows dry should it start to rain. Yes, I'm going to turn on the probes. I always turn them on early because that's what I used to do when I was flying props. It's just an old habit. And then here I turn on the uh, hydraulic pumps. And then I check that the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down. And that allows our self-loading cargo, which is starting to come out to board the aircraft. Over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed. Then I'm going to turn on the packs and listen for that rush of air. There's that rush of air that's now sending in uh, air conditioning into the cabin because I see over here 
we have 26 degrees outside. So it's going to be quite warm inside the aircraft and we want to make sure it's nice and cool. And then I turn on the steady light and that lets the ground crews know that we're in here and getting ourselves prepared. Right, now it's time to do the FMC. So first of all, I'll clear off the screen, FMC, check that the air rack and everything is up to date and that there are no issues with the program. Go to into the position and we put in our starting point, as you have to do with any GPS, is LI and RN. And we are at stand 15, so 1-5. And if we check the charts and look at the parking stands and coordinates, it says for stand 15, if you can see this, it is 40, 52, and 7, and 14, 16, and 9. So that is exactly correct. And we'll put that in. So now the GPS has got our local, uh, our location on the world surface inside. Now we'll go to route, and we'll put in the LIRN again for our origin, and LMML for our destination. We are Ryanair, and we are number 186, so we put that in there. Go to next page. Now this is where we're going to check the flight plan and have a look and see what it says for our routing. So it says that the first point, uh, first waypoint is going to be Della. So D-E-L-E-R. And then it says we take the M742, so the M742, and that will take us to PAL, P-A-L, and then we take the Lima 1-2, Lima 1-2, and that will take us to GOZO, so G-Z-O, G-Z and an O. And that's it. Activate that and execute. Go to fix. We'll put in LMML over here. And then we want a four mile circle around our destination, a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle. Go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level uh, is Flight level seven zero. So I'm going to put in seven zero, and that's for our transition level, not the transition altitude, but the transition level. And then we need to put in the values for flight level two hundred, flight level one five zero, and flight level one hundred. Twenty thousand feet, fifteen thousand feet, and ten thousand feet. The Q and H at our destination is 1010, put that in. And then we're going to look at the flight plan. And it says that for the descent at flight level 200, it is 326 at 31. So 326 at 31 and at 15,000 feet it is 326 at 15 at 25 at 25, 25. and at 10,000 feet it is 316 at 28 316 at 28 and put that in and then execute that. Go to departures and now we need to listen in 
to ATIS to see what the ATIS information is giving us. And ATIS at Naples is 135.97. Capodicino, airport information, Delta, 1012, Zulu, wind, 057, at 13, visibility, greater than 20 miles, sky condition, clear, temperature, 2, 6, 2.15, altimeter, 1008, landing and departing, runway, 6, VFR aircraft, say direction of flight, all aircraft, red back, hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Delta, Capodicino. Well, we have Delta, and it is runway 6 is our departure and the local altimeter is 1008 so I'll put that in so now we'll be putting in runway 6 over there and we are using the Delhi 7 Gulf for our departure so there's the Delhi 7 Gulf and execute that go to arrivals we are using ILS-31 and we're using the Tibor transition. Execute that. Now we go to legs and here's where I'm going to go through the legs and check this for any discontinuity. Right, I've got the screen up on here. I'm going to click this and put it onto plan. Here you can see the route is taking us out, swinging us around, and then it takes us south. So I'm just going to go through each of these steps. In fact, I'll bring that closer. So I'm going to go and step through each of these. As I, as I do it, it centers that particular waypoint. So it's going all the way down looking good so far there's Palermo and coming down there's the 10 mile circle and GZO now I'm going to bring the Tibor up to Gozo execute that now when I step through this you can see it comes all the way down brings it around and then swings into a left base for runway 031 which of course is what we want so we have a good plan there right switching back to map I'm going to put weather on here I'm going to turn on the data I'm going to put terrain on your side and turn on the data now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we are going to ping on the air traffic screen I need to put our decision height in and that I'm going to use this knob over here to turn this up to the decision height of 431 431 feet so when it hits 431 we'll get that message that says minimums minimums and then we'll have to make a decision at that point whether or not we're going to abort and go around or we're going to land. Now I'm going to put in 37,000 feet for our altitude over here. I'm also going to put 37,000 feet in this as well. Now this is our pressurization. And the landing altitude, and that is the ele elevation of the airport, is 297. So I'm going to make that 300 because these are in increments of 50 feet on the landing altitude switch there. Now if we're going to be making our dis departure on runway 6, then we need to set 56 degrees. Uh, for the course heading as we depart so 56 I'll do yours too if that's okay okay got that in now we've got that we need to go in and complete the preparation so go to route perform initialization 
Now, we have 2,267 kilograms of fuel for the reserve. The trip and taxi will be 3,097. That comes to 5,284, or rounding it out at 5.3. So 5.3, and put that in right there. Reserves 2.3, 2.3. Cost index is 6. And double click that, and it calculates what the rest of the figures are. Our flight cruising altitude is 370. Our average wind aloft is 334 at 49. So 334 at 49. And I'll put that in for the cruise wind. Now transition altitude is 5,000 feet. So I'm going to put 5,000 feet in there, different from the transition level, which is 7,000 feet. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet. So I'm going to execute that. N1 limit. Oh yes, I'll take that. 26 degrees, definitely do that. We're going to take off using flaps 10. And I'm going to double click that and it makes the calculations for me. It says the center of gravity is 24 and the trim wheel value is going to be 4.76. One click on each of these gives me the value for V1, for rotate speed and for liftoff at 145. So that's our V2. So our V2 I'm going to put up here at 145. Good, we've got that. Flight director on here, flight director on there, push the V-nav, push the L-nav, we have green lights, we have a good plan. We're going to arm the throttle, put VOR1 on, VOR1 there, and now I'm going to turn on the yaw damper, I'm going to look for the flight continuity light to go out. I'm going to switch this to RTO in preparation. Right, our passengers are all on board, so I'm going to bring up the stairs and let's get that hatch closed. There's the electric motor of that. Stairs coming up, you can see the stairs coming up here. They just fold so very neatly and tidily as they go into the space underneath the front cabin compartment. So fuel, windows, the seat belts are on, door lights are out, MCP is done, takeoff thrust is done, CDU pre-flight completed, rudder airline free inter now since we're departing from runway 6, we'll need to have our nose go to the right and our tail to the left. And now I'm going to put on the anti-collision light. And so we are now set to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback so that we can start the engines. And which engine would you like to start first today? Number 1 or number 2? One left or right? you like to do the left one, number one? Good. I'm going to switch then to generator one up here. The Navigraph charts are now active and are right here so that you can see our progress as we depart and go to the active runway. All right. And here we go. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brake's off. Parking brake is off. 
As soon as we start to move, I'm going to be turning off the air conditioner Christ. so that we can get the compressor to start to spin those engines. Fresh released, here we go. Engine start switch for number one. Fresh released, here we go. Right, engine switches one is turned. So the start valve has opened. Here you can see the M2 is spinning up with 12, 13, 14. When this gets to 24, then I'll be introducing the fuel into engine number one. There it is. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to start to increase. Good, it's coming on nicely. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And there it is. We should hear the engine catch. There, there's the engines. We have a good start, so I'm switching now to engine number two. Star valve has opened. Up here I've got 150 volts on engine number one, so number two is coming up. The N2 is winding up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There's the fuel going in. Looking now for the engine to start heating up. There, look at that, taking off. Now I'm looking for the low oil pressure light. And the low oil pressure light has gone out. And we're coming up very nicely on engine number two. Looking again for 115 volts to appear up here. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And we have 115 volts. So now I'm just going to make sure that, yes, we've got a balanced engine. So I'm now switching the bus to the generators on both of the engines. Over here I'm going to turn on the air conditioning again. I'm going to turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. Now I'm going to go to flaps 10. And I'm going to verify the takeoff speeds. There's a one adjustment I need to make there. Okay. And I'm turning on the taxi lights. Right, after start, generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice not required, isolation valve is correct, engine start levers are idle detent, flight deck door is closed and locked, Recall is checked, flight controls is checked, flaps, we have green lights, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is correct, speed brake lever down, detent, ground equipment is clear. So we are ready now to taxi, we'll go down here and then make a right to the end of the runway. Beautiful scenery this, you know, absolutely delightful. And the kamikazes, they're everywhere. Let's see if we can get to the main taxiway. We've got to just go down there and to the right. Let's see if we can make it without having a kamikaze. scenery this and this is by Aerosoft of course great detail lovely detail
I'm going to come up onto the tower frequency and let's request takeoff clearance. Naples Tower, Ryanair 186, Lydia, runway 6, departure to the south. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 6, approved, south departure. Cleared for takeoff, runway 6, Ryanair 186. Uh, takeoff briefing is reviewed engine B start switches are continuous switches on all lights are now on we are cleared for takeoff and I am starting the clock look left look right look out for those birds don't want a bird strike so let's move into position and take off Advancing power to N1. We have good power, toga button pushed, and we're rolling. So, what I'd like to do 
I suggest that you go on into the back. I've got the cabin crew there is all set to give you an absolutely smashing meal. And don't forget, there is complimentary champagne and caviar. Yes, you can hear them in the back cheering. <laughs> anyway, as soon as we get into the uh, downwind section of Malta, I'll give you a shout so that you can come back up and help me land the aircraft, okay? All right. I'll see you in about 45 minutes. Okay. Gizmo, you come back on in. I apologize for all of the bumps that we experienced at certain altitudes as we were crossing over the Mediterranean. There was some really interesting weather that we ran into, but we are now smooth as we are slowing down and we are on downwind for landing at Malta. So let's tune in and Restorization is good, see 
seatbelt signs are on check, recall is check, auto brake is check, we have number three landing gate of the host briefing. We are set to make our approach. Okay. As you saw just a minute or two ago, that was the airport as we were passing a beam of it. Here we go, now we're making our left turn. We're now on, turning on to base leg. We're on base leg. Now I'm locking on to the localizer. 
Zoo and there we are. We are now on the glide slope. We have intercepted the glide slope. Alright, all lights are on. And cure for landing. Going to flap 10. Oh, we're breaking out of the cloud. We're going to have a bit of a crosswind though. I have the runway in sight. We are two white and two red.
arrive and crew is released to go to work starting the APU wings are looking good flaps are coming up right now we'll go over there to the terminal building and we'll see what we can find for the parking spaces but what we're looking for is stand number four stand number four all right there we go should show you this now this is Malta Airport and it's by just sim look at this and fortunately they've got all the kamikaze vehicles behind the fence I like that <laughs> and look at the detail look at that and there it says Malta Airport Really delightful scenery. Look at that. All right, we'll do a clean up now. Everybody's off, so IRS is off. APU is off, 
battery is off, shutdown is complete. Well, Gizmo, that was a very nice flight. I'm really happy that you suggested it. That's a nice little run from Malta, between Naples and Malta. <clears throat> the weather was lovely. There was some cloud, unfortunately, so I couldn't get any film of Vesuvius. I really wanted to be able to see something of that, but perhaps another time. But we do have all of this lovely scenery. Thank you for the suggestion. And I hope that you'll join us again for another flight in the future. And for everyone else, I will see you again next week on Ryanair 186. Bye, everybody.